Um, me and my group, we are working on plant biochemistry, and the major question that we try to address is how the plants make uh, medicine compounds that they have medicinal activities. So for us, uh, the traditional references in uh, traditional Chinese medicine or other traditional medicines around the world, they are really, really useful to try to identify compounds, target compounds that they could be used in modern medicine. I found them really, really amazing, those old manuscripts that they are, some of them, they are more than uh, uh, 1,000 years old and they have all this uh, important knowledge uh, and all these uh, references how to prepare those uh, remedies based on plants and other herbs and the uses that they propose for treatment of different uh, medical conditions. Of course, that time was not really clear what is about the medical condition, but they are really, really interesting. The story of uh, Professor Tu and uh, it's a really, really amazing story that is fascinating for everyone. But uh, Professor Tu, she, she didn't really work with the traditional way of medicine. She just find references in traditional Chinese medicine. An old textbook was 1,500 years old at that time. And uh, she found out, because she was looking for an antimalarial drug, and basically she has identified using this approach what is the molecule, the active molecule, against malaria. And she has discovered uh, artemisinin, as we know right now, which is a modern drug now is used against malaria. And this is remarkable. But it's not that she has applied traditional Chinese medicine. I would say she was based in traditional Chinese medicine to discover a modern drug. I don't would like to characterize traditional Chinese medicine or Western medicine. I would like to see it more as traditional medicine and modern medicine. Because everywhere in the world, there was a traditional system of medicine based on some preparation of plants, on some other uh, natural resources, on minerals. However, uh, the life has demanded that to change, to evolve. So the basic thing is that we would like to be sure that the medicine that we're using to treat a disease cures the patient and don't create more problems. So the modern medicine is more based on, uh, is evidence-based and on, uh, there are a lot of, uh, how should I put it, uh, measures to have quality controls that we are sure that the medicine that is prescribed for uh, the patient works and cures and don't create extra problems. While the traditional medicine, it's a little bit based on experience and observation, but not on pure, hardcore scientific data. Yes, we could learn a lot. There are references in traditional medicine, because at that time, and still there are people around the world that they don't have access to modern drugs. So what we could learn is that we'd learn, because we'd face diseases like uh, malaria, like tuberculosis, and uh, more complicated diseases. So mining on these uh, references could uh, help us to target our uh, drug discovery programs on uh, natural resources. I think what we need right now is we need uh, to find ways, more efficient ways, to use all these references in traditional medicine, including Chinese medicine, to discover new drugs for uh, new challenges that we have in health, uh, global health. So our approach is based on uh, uh, discovery of the genes that are involved in the synthesis of uh, some uh, potential new drugs from plants and uh, use uh, technologies of synthetic biology to produce them in a significant amount so they could accelerate the transfer of uh, the work from the lab to the clinical trials. And I think this is what uh, a lot of people see as the future. Let's make it clear. When we're talking about drug resistance, we're talking mainly of about antimicrobial drug resistance. We're talking about diseases like malaria, like tuberculosis, diseases that they cause from uh, pathogenic bacteria or uh, viruses. And yes, there is uh, drug resistance because it's part of the biology and the resistance mechanism that they uh, develop those bacteria, those microorganisms to be more efficient to their life. 
The drug resistance, it doesn't have to do with traditional or modern medicine. For example, the artemisinin, which is uh, a drug discovered based on traditional Chinese medicine, now there are reported a lot of cases of uh, drug resistance of the uh, parasite that causes uh, malaria uh, against artemisinin. So the drug resistance has to do more with uh, the microbial drugs and uh, despite what we are using or using something uh, a preparation based on traditional Chinese, me uh, traditional Chinese medicine and other medicine or in modern medicine, sooner or later we will have a drug resistance. So right now we have a couple of projects. I will show some uh, results in my talk today. And we are studying, uh, for example, one drug. Uh, we have a reference about uh, one traditional Chinese medicine remedy called Banzilian. And we're using the main plant. And we have identified some molecules that probably they are the special molecules. So Banzilian is used right now in China as complementary medicine for chemotherapy. So, and the benefit of using this herbal remedy is that we have decrease of the metastatic cancers. So, what we are working right now is trying to identify the genes and the enzymes from that produce this compound and put it in a yeast so we could practically brew uh, a yeast and produce the, the, uh, this compound and test it further for its activity against a different type of metastatic cancers. The plant they have in the genetic information, in the DNA, they decode this information about the enzymes, the catalysts that they do these transformations to produce those molecules. What are they doing? They take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they transform it into glucose through photosynthesis. And from the glucose, which is a little bit complicated right now, it's probably a lot of uh, uh, chemical steps, they produce uh, different compounds, a big, big array of compounds. Each plant has the special ability to synthesize different molecules. So this genetic information is really, really necessary. But we are not using at least my approach is not to use the plants to produce more of this compound, is that to extract this genetic information, confirm this uh, biochemical uh, process and transfer this uh, process to a microorganism like a yeast or a bacteria that we has been uh, engineered and produce these molecules in the yeast or in, uh, in a microbe and will isolate. So yes, they will be will, will not use the plants, culture uh, hectares of uh, plants to produce a small amount of medicine, but we will use it in a factory and br uh, with uh, just brewing medicine. They are all problems because we're working with plants, we need to grow up the plants, and sometimes uh, we have to find the right seeds, and the taxonomy sometimes is not the best. One problem is the problem how to identify the genes that are involved in the biosynthesis, so, or to analyze our results and to be sure that what uh, our results in the lab is what we are looking for and not... Uh, so there are problems like that every day, I could say. But this is the, the everyday routine of science. How we could use uh, uh, the current drugs or to develop future drugs or how do they work on the human body. So I suppose that uh, it could be done better job, but I think probably it depends really on uh, investment of from the government and uh, the industry. And I have to say that the Chinese uh, uh, government is an example of investing, long-term investing in science. So I believe that sooner or later there will be a couple of examples of modern drugs based on uh, traditional Chinese medicine uh, sources.